Hi, Sugar Freedom fans. It's Katherine Gordon, the Sugar Freedom Woman. Today I'm going to talk about dopamine, motivation, sugar, and insulin resistance. A couple of weeks ago, I got a question on Quora. The question was, how can I get myself to care about my weight? And I've been thinking about that question for a couple of weeks. I answer, answered it on my podcast, The Sugar Freedom Show, over on Blog Talk Radio, and I talked about the ways that I had become motivated and started to care about my weight back in 2008 when I started my sugar freedom, ketogenic, low carb, no cardio, that transformation. And there were two things that gave me the motivation. One was breaking my foot and the other one was being mistaken for my son's grandmother. But that's another story and you've heard it many times. I kept thinking about motivation and what gets people to care about their weight and what's going on with people who have stopped caring. A couple of years ago, January, two years ago, January, I went into kind of a funk for a weekend. I actually, this is the guest room and I spent like the weekend in that bed crying. A lot of it probably had to do, I had been experimenting with some other foods that were higher in carbs and higher in natural sugars. I had come off of finishing a musical and I didn't have another show lined up and it was the dead of winter and I really had a difficult time and I even went to a weekend that uh, was supposed to talk about it was a motivational life coaching and it just made me cry even more and I got into these real feelings of of self-loathing quite frankly and I wanted to figure out what was going on I did come out of it I readjusted my appetite got more exercise in, I got myself a light box, and I started feeling better. And I haven't had an episode like that since. However, as the sugar freedom woman, I'm constantly looking at the science for getting off of sugar, why we should get off of sugar, and whether it actually works. So I came across a couple of things that I wanna share with you today. Glasses on. The first one is an article, Dopamine Deficiency, eight ways to naturally overcome depression. So somebody who has stopped caring about their weight, possibly stopped caring about their health and their motivation, might be dealing with some depression and might be having some issues with dopamine. This article is from University Health News Daily. And when I do the notes for this, I'll put the, the link to this article in the show notes, in the video notes. One of the things that was fascinating that happened when I read this article is there were a bunch of responses, comments from people who were dealing with uh, depression, procrastination, these kinds of deficiencies, and their stories were very, very moving. The compassion in the comments, really fascinating. So you might wanna take a look at some of the comments. What I'm gonna to offer to you today is some of the early notes in the article, which I think can be very helpful and can demonstrate what the connection is between sugar, dopamine, and our behavior. Treating a dopamine deficiency can help you take back your health. How? First, you need to understand that depression is a disease that can be caused by dopamine deficiency. In many cases, it's caused by actual physiologic changes in your brain. Therefore, when you feel depressed, don't think of it as a defect in your personality. Rather, think of depression as you would any other illness. If you had a broken bone, you would need to wear a cast to stabilize the bone while it heals. Likewise, if you have depression, you need to address the underlying root problem in your brain. And one of those underlying root problems just might be a dopamine deficiency. I'm gonna break in here with my own insights. One of the things that I discovered when I was writing Sugar Freedom and in my continuing research on sugar is this concept of dopamine resistance, which is often found among people who are obese and people who have been obese in the past, past like me, is that we can, that there have been studies looking at the uh, brains of people who've been obese and seeing uh, disruption in their dopamine sensitivity. So it may not just be dopamine deficiency, it may also be dopamine resistance. But let's go on and I wanna share with you, how do I know whether I have
dopamine deficiency. All right, so here are 14 dopamine deficiency sim symptoms. Here we go. Number one, lack of interest in life. Two, decreased motivation. Three, procrastination. Any of you deal with that? Four, inability to feel pleasure. Five, altered sleep patterns. Six, restless leg syndrome. Seven, fatigue. Eight, mood swings. Nine, excessive feelings of hopelessness or guilt. 10, poor memory. 11, inability to focus, impaired concentration. 12, impulsive or self-destructive behaviors. Spending too long on Twitter and Facebook, that would be mine. 13, addictions to caffeine or other stimulants. Uh-oh. And 14, weight gain. Ways to treat dopamine deficiency. So she's got the author, and the author is Jamie Cooley, RN, CNWC. So she's a registered nurse. I'm not sure what CNWC is. I'll have to look that up. But her number one, her number one way to decrease, to treat dopamine deficiency is decrease your sugar intake. Holy cow, hallelujah, who knew? So this article is available to you. There's a number of other suggestions in there. And as I said, I'll put in the link. Please check this out. Check out what some of the people are saying who are responding to this article. Really moving and also encouraging to know that there are some physiological things that we can do. And if you're a Sugar Freedom fan, and if you have the Sugar Freedom program, <clears throat> you certainly can follow the sugar strike, stay low sugar, and uh, continue to improve your insulin sensitivity and your dopamine sensitivity. So let's go ahead and shift over to insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. And I'm going to share a book with you. One of the wonderful things about being on Amazon and being uh, having a Kindle and having Amazon Kindle Unlimited is they, they do suggest some pretty good books to me. And this book was suggested to me recently, and it's called Depression, Insomnia, Anxiety, How I Healed It All, Alt Sliding Scale Diet by Leonid Alt Schuler, MD. So he's, an, he's a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry. So I simply did, uh, I downloaded the cover to his Kindle book and then printed out a shot of it for you, and there it is right there. This is available through Kindle Unlimited. So if you have the Kindle Unlimited subscription, this is included with your subscription. Otherwise, I believe it's right around, it costs right around $5. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up on my Kindle. There it is. And so I've come to, whoops, final words. I've come to the chapter, and now I lost it. Here we go. My alt sliding scale diet. Now, so this is this is a review. I don't want to give it all away, but I do want to talk about how he decided my diet. Here we go. And this is Dr. Alt Schuler's description. So he's he's an MD, he's a psych psychiatrist, but he has also dealt with the difficulties of dealing with insulin resistance. My experience with my patients showed me that my diet is very effective for treatment and prevention of mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, and insomnia. It does it by improving insulin resistance in the body and in the brain. I initially developed my diet for the treatment of my hypertension. I treated it successfully, completely recovered, and noticed that in the process of the treatment, I started feeling much better emotionally, no longer felt tired and anxious, my sleep improved, and overall energy levels. I felt that my attention, concentration, ability to stay focused, ability to enjoy pleasure, motivation, all improved noticeably. I also noticed a huge improvement in my memory and ability to learn. I recovered my motivation and got involved in many activities. 
I had some sense that I was kind of half asleep for some years, not really living my life fully. I felt bad for the time wasted and my inability to find a solution long ago. But I'm happy that I finally got to the bottom of the problem and solved it, coming out as a winner. Everything could have been much worse for me if I did not find a cause and a solution. So I want to dig in a little bit to what he's talking about here. He is a medical doctor. He's a psychiatrist. He's been dealing with hypertension, even though he's at a normal weight and he can't understand what's going on. And he begins to study the action of insulin in the body, the action of insulin resistance in the brain, and he discovers answers which he then applies to his diet. This is his work. So I just want to say a few things about his work and as, as a reviewer and not go too far into it, but his solution, and when I got the book, I didn't know what his solution was going to be. I had no way of knowing whether he was going to say, give up red meat, you never know. His solution was, instead of resist, resist, restricting or controlling carbohydrates, he went ahead and gave them up for a particular period of time. So he did not control calories or amounts, but he did take out the carbohydrates. He'd already gotten off of sugar, but his protocol was for a specific period of time, he ate meat, eggs, cheese, animal products, basically eliminating carbohydrates, which allowed him not to be hungry and not to feel restricted in terms of how much he ate. So he went ahead, ate as much as he wanted of meat, eggs, and cheese, and then made his transition into the nutrition program that suited him. Sounds a little bit similar to the way we do the sugar strike, and then we trans transition into long-term sugar freedom. You get off of the sugar, you lose the weight you need to leave, you lose the weight that you need to lose, you start to feel better, and then you begin to add foods back in. I need to go back into the book to see if he, I know that it was at least 30 days that he followed his pretty much zero carb protocol and then added the other foods back in. The idea was, and I'm not just hearing this from Dr. Altshuler, I'm hearing this from other, other MDs and other researchers that there is an opportunity, and I believe Dr. Jay Wrigley talks about this as well, that if we can get off of the sugar and the starches and the carbohydrates, the glucose dependence, if we can get off of it long enough, sometimes we can heal our insulin sensitivity and then we can go back into a little bit more varied, a little bit more varied traditional diet to live the life being going out to restaurants and being with family and not narrowing our food choices down quite so much, but that we have to give the body time to heal, give the insulin sensitivity time to come back, and then once the healing happens, I would liken it to if you sprain your ankle, let's see, let's say you sprain your ankle playing soccer. It's not that you're never going to play soccer again, but that you have to give the body time to heal before you go back and start playing and doing your other activities. I think it's a, it's a similar analogy to what we do when we remove the foods that are giving us issues with insulin resistance, dopamine deficiency, dopamine resistance. That being said, there are some foods that I never brought back into my diet. Some foods that plenty of other people can eat simply because they tend to send me right down, back down the road, triggering compulsive overeating. One more thing I would like to share with you, as you can see some roses from my garden, and one of the reasons that I want to manage motivation and procrastination in my own life is that I discovered, especially when I, when I went through that very depressive episode of self-loathing a number of years ago, is that I was not allowing myself to do the things that I loved. And the clinical term for this is anhedonia, resisting the things that give you pleasure. One of the things that I've always enjoyed has been drawing. And for my birthday, 
my son and my husband got me a gift certificate at my favorite bookstore. And one of the things that I got at the bookstore was how to draw dragons. I'm gonna put my glasses back on. Okay, so this one was written by Jane Sullivan. Really wonderful book. If you, if you want to draw, um, if you like to, uh, you can even, a lot of these designs, you can color them first and then learn to draw them later. I've always loved to draw, and I had been not allowing myself the opportunity to do so. <laughs> well, my, motiva my motivation, my love for different things in life is beginning to come back, and one of the things that I've been doing is starting to draw again. So here's my dragon. He's uh, flying in the night sky. It's a purple night that we've got here, but hey, it's a dragon world. My sky can be any color I want. So what this book by Jane Sullivan does is it takes you through step by step. Let me show you one of the examples. You start simply with a simple line drawing and then add other elements and then add color. And really, you can learn to draw. So here's the, the soaring dragon. And as you can see, it starts very simply just with a couple of lines, and then you go into colors and more elaborate drawings. You probably also know that I love to act and sing and dance, and so that's one of the reasons that I avoid the sugars and grains, because they lead to, for me, compulsive overeating. They also lead to joint pain, feelings of self-loathing, ah, and it becomes this cascade of overeating, feeling bad about overeating, not wanting to go to dance class or work out or go on auditions or anything. And so we have to turn that cycle around. One of the ways we can do it is get all of the impulse and the trigger foods out, whether that's sugar freedom, three day sugar strike, or the alt sliding scale diet where you would eliminate pretty much all carbohydrates. Some way to get your body reset and then Remember to do the things that you love and enjoy. Do them as an amateur. The root of the word amateur is love. Do things for love. Do things that you enjoy and then fuel them with the healthy food that suits your body. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you will like it, possibly share it, especially if you know somebody who is thinking about getting off of sugar and grains who knows, you may know somebody who's thinking about going keto, going carnivore even, and you might want to send them in the direction of some information from uh, medical doctors like Dr. Altshuler, or also when people want examples of individuals who have gotten off of sugar long-term and are enjoying life. That would be me. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and we'll see you soon here on the Sugar Freedom Channel. Bye-bye everyone.